Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anime Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table, another Iconics model, a newer Iconics model, I have the USS Missouri BB-63. And this is one that I've had some requests to build, so here we go. The USS Missouri, referred to as Big Mo, this United States naval battleship is best remembered as the site of the surrender of the Empire of Japan which ended World War II. And I've already got one battleship up there. It's a smaller version. It's not the Missouri. It's a uh, different ship. Now I have the larger Iconics Missouri and I imagine there is going to be quite a bit of detail and difficulty and if we look at the difficulty gauge on the back we have the newer packaging here. We are once again in the very orange so pretty difficult not terribly hard, certainly not easy. Not gonna scare me. Let's open this up, see what's inside, and put it together. USS Missouri. What's inside? <clears throat> oh, is it gonna pull out properly? Oh, look at that, look at that. We got sheets, we got instructions. Anything else? Something else. Stuck. There it is. Squeezers. Customary set of tweezers that comes with most of these Iconics models. Put those, add those to my growing collection of tweezers. I could do a giveaway. Anyway, we have one, two, three, four pieces of paper for the instructions. Oh, my, that's a bit intimidating. And how many sheets do we have here? The tape is torn. We have we have a problem. The tape. All right, fix the tape issue. So one, two, three sheets. We're going to put these aside and quickly look at the first page of the instructions. I'm going to assume that if you're building this model, it's a little bit of an advanced model. You have some experience in these Metal Earth models already, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. We keep it pretty short and straight. Oh, look. Cannon parts. Very cool. It's nice that I don't have to shape all the cannon parts. I'm going to keep it simple and just briefly go over the first page here. We open up the first page of the instructions. You've got the first part here, the Metal Earth logo. You've got your line drawing of the kit, QR code for the 360 view. Let's see, and there's the web address here. You've got to create the best connections, and you've got a sample part indicating the slots, the fold lines, and the tabs. Tabs go in slots, fold lines are pre. Uh, indented areas for folding parts. We got your legend, E engraved side. When you see that pointing at something that's pointing at the engraved side or section of a part, N E is for non-engraved. Tension point means pay attention to something in particular. It's usually talking about how tabs line up or how something lines up when going together. Sometimes there's notation with it. Blue circle when you see that in a connection next to a connection point, it means to insert a tab folded over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees. And your assembly tips, some tools that will help you out, like clippers, nylon pliers, and, and tweezers, which I use. And then below that is the assembly steps, starting with step one. Part one, you fold that. Here's part two. You put them together. You end up with that. And then you fold that up, and you do end up with that. And you've got to repeat this four times. Step two, here's part three. Fold it up, end up with that. Fold those in. Add on part four, which is folded like that, to get this, and then add on part five to get that. So basically just follow along over here on page two. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit here. This is organized a bit strangely, but on page two you see the three different metal sheets with all the parts listed. So if you grab one of the metal sheets, grab one kind of quick like, looks like it's this part or this sheet. So you've got all the part numbers pointed on all the parts so you can build the model. So you can find the parts when building the model. 
usually they have this first and then the start of the assembly flow chart and I almost didn't catch that. So I guess there's your sheets. Come back over here, start the assembly flow chart. Once you get to the bottom, I'm guessing you go to page three and pick up step three. Yep. And so on and so forth. You just follow the arrows and the steps and put everything together. And once you're done with that sheet, you find the next sheet, probably starting with page, what is it? One, two, three, four, so five. Which is probably five, six, seven, eight, right here. Yeah. And you open that up and keep going. So not too complicated. Let's take a moment to talk about tools. This is a very basic set of tools that I use in pretty much every build. I've got a very standard set of tweezers that I use very frequently. I've got some precision tweezers, a, another flat set here, and a couple of pointed tweezers, one of which I've ground the tip down just a bit to make it a little flatter for grabbing tabs. I have clippers that I use to get the parts off of the sheets quickly and easily. It's better than bending and trying to break them off. And then a couple of different pliers, a flat nose set and a long needle nose plier set. They come in handy for bending in different situations. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. So, I've talked about some tools and I've got the basics to get me started. Got my sheets at the ready and my instructions. Let's build this thing. This build starts out with repeating the same process four times. At least the initial steps are pretty easy.
The railings on this model are very small and hard to grab and bend. Proceed with caution. With large modules like this, with lots of parts, it's time to break out the colored pencils and fill in the numbers of the used parts. It makes it easier finding parts later on. Sometimes getting a part right takes some test fitting and adjusting. Make sure to pay attention to which way the parts fit together. I nearly put part 6 on the wrong side of part 7 and wanted to put part 6 on upside down on top of that. These tabs are closer to the sides here. I had to bend them in a little to be able to twist them. In this instance, I assumed I knew which way to fold this part, but it turns out I was incorrect. The tabs will not line up if you fold it incorrectly.
There is no clear fold line on part 11. I held the parts together and came to the conclusion that I should bend in on the post of either side of the connection point. That went in on the first shot. That doesn't happen very often. By the way, I wanted to fold the flaps down on part 13 until after these quarter pieces were attached. I figured it would be easier to get to the tabs and twist them that way. Now keep in mind when watching this video, when it comes to repetitive parts, repetitive steps, I'm not going to show you every single time to keep things moving along. I'll show you one or two times how I do it and just move along. I'm not skipping steps. I'm just keeping things from being overly repetitive. And also sometimes it may take multiple tries to get a part to fit, multiple adjustments. I may not show you every single adjustment I make. Again, it's to keep it from being overly long and boring and just move the build along. So sometimes it will make it look like things come together easier than they did. Take your time, be patient. It may take several tries to get things to fit. This part just doesn't seem to fit together right. Maybe I'm doing something wrong.
a quick test fit can reveal other issues that need to be dealt with. It might have been a better idea to place this tab so that it goes inward. I found out later that this tab ends up getting in the way. And this is where that tab gets in the way. I had to squeeze a little too much to get things to fit.
I should have bent this railing up before wrapping part 28 around. I am thankful that there is a guide on the instructions on how to bend parts 30 and 31 and that the bends are almost at all right angles.
These tabs are so close to the folded down parts that I had to pry them inward just to have a chance at twisting them. Instead of twisting, however, I just bent them in and over. I also didn't bother with straightening the guns up right now. I will wait until I am done or nearly finished before I do that. I can see accidentally bending them over as I handle the model and breaking them off. I used a dowel rod to curve the rear section of part 33 and made small adjustments with tweezers, bent down the sides and front, then carefully bent up the cannons. Repeat seven more times to make all eight. I will just show a couple here and then skip ahead. Thank you. 
I bent the tabs outward here to allow the sides of part 35 to swing over them when attached. And this has turned into one long build. A bit of a challenge, but still fun, aside from a few personal errors of my own. Check out part two, which should be up very soon, where we will continue building the upper decks, starting with the antenna and moving on. As always, thank you for watching, and check out part two.